I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are beginning the conversation of power to kill. The power to kill. Now, our Father, Yahweh, the Most High Power, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Creator of all things, the Creator and Destroyer, He has the ultimate power to kill. And in, in order to serve His purposes, this power is uh, given unto certain nations and certain individuals to, to uh, as clearly as this can be said, carry out the purposes of the Father. The purposes of the Father. This, as always, is a message to our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel today being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. We, as a people, are a nation wherever we are. But the Father does have a chosen land. Let us begin. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 4, verse 10. This is our forefather, the prophet Ezra, speaking unto the angel Uriel. In all intents and purposes, speaking unto the Father, because all uh, says, all that serve the Father say, Thus saith the Most High. He said, Moreover to, unto me, Thine own things and such as are grown up with thee canst thou not know. So, unto our forefather, the prophet Moses, the angel is saying, uh, Your own things, the things in your time. Uh, the things in your generation, the things that have grown up with you, you can't even know these things. You can't even know the scope of all these things. Verse 11, how should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the way of the highest? How are you then able to understand the Father who is eternal from the beginning to the end, encompassing all? And the world, world meaning time frame, age, span of time, and the world being now outwardly corrupted, to understand the corruption that is evident in my sight. So you can't understand what's going on in your time frame. I see all. I see all. Even those who confess to be my children and to be righteous are, uh, have wickedness in them. The corruption is great. So how can you know? How can you know? The second book of the prophet Ezra, chapter 8, verse 45. Be not wroth with us, but spare thy people, and have mercy upon thine own inheritance. For thou art merciful unto thy creatures. So again, this is our forefather, the prophet Ezra, speaking unto uh, the Most High. Be not wroth with us, be not angry with us, but spare thy children, the nation of Israel, the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel the sons and daughters, the royal sons and daughters of the one true living most high power. And have mercy upon thine own inheritance because we are the Father's inheritance. Out of everything that the Father has chosen, he has, out of everything the Father has created, he has chosen unto himself his gold, his men, and his silver, his women. We are his precious jewels. For thou art merciful unto thy creature. Remember the Father created man. Verse 46, Then answered he me and said, Things present are for the present, and things to cometh for such as be to come. Verse 47, For thou comest far short, that thou shouldest be able to love my creature 
more than I. So our Father has endured far more for the nation of Israel. Far more than we could ever know. And His plan is far greater than we could ever know because the Father knows who we, the nation of Israel, become. He knows how magnificent, righteous, and wonderful we become. For thou comest far short that thou shouldest be able to love my creature more than I, but I have oft times drawn nigh near unto thee and unto it, but never to the unrighteous. So the Father only comes close unto the righteous of the nation of Israel. Verse 48, In this also thou art marvelous before the Most High. Verse 49, In that thou, Esdras, hast humbled thyself, as it becometh thee, and has not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. No pride. No pride. No arrogance. No vanity. No haughtiness. Understanding exactly who we serve. Understanding exactly who we come before. In the spirit. Fear of the one true living most high power. Hope of the salvation of Yahweh Shai, our Savior. The Comforter hasn't come yet at this point, but understanding uh, that the Father would give us comfort and the gift of our Mother Wisdom, who is a marvelous gift from our Father. Knowing who we are, knowing who we are unto the Father, knowing who the Father is unto us. Verse 50, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. So this is a threat from the Father. As it is written, Thus saith the Most High, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, in this time frame, this age, this span of time. Verse 51, But understand that for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. So make sure this word gets out. Speak this gospel, this good news. Let those who can humble themselves Let them know. Verse 52. For unto you is paradise opened. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Believe in him. Believe in the Father through the Son. Believe in the Father through the Son. What our Father says shall occur shall occur for unto you is paradise opened the tree of life is planted the time to come is prepared plenteousness is made ready a city is built in that city is the new city the new kingdom the new city of jerusalem the everlasting kingdom of the mighty nation of israel and rest is allowed yea perfect goodness and wisdom this is the promise of the father This is the promise of the Father unto the one-third of the nation of Israel today. The men, the women, the children, the true believers, the remnant. And if we believe the Father and what he says, and that what our Father says shall occur, shall occur. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 28. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition by us not being afraid of the adversaries and of their power that has been given unto them. That power which is coming to an end, but a power to kill, which is to them an evident token of perdition because the Father is simply using them. He's simply using them. They have been what the Father has beaten us with, reprimanded us with, corrected us with. 
but to you of salvation. But the power that was given unto them, the Father's going to take back to himself and use righteously against them. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, there's no need to fear. Paradise is opened. All we have to do is endure this last captivity. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, that salvation is not coming for them. Because they're not being beaten today. They're not being uh, oppressed today. They're not being refined today. They're not. They have power to kill today. They do. And they're exercising it. They're exercising it every single day. They are exercising it every single day. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, they are the damned. They are the damned. They are the seed line and the bloodline of the son of perdition, which is Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mousier, the so-called white nation, but to you of salvation and that of the most high power. And that of the most high power. So with this understanding, there is a nation, a family of people upon the earth that have the power to kill, and they are exercising it on a daily basis. This power is how we're going to come to an end, sooner rather than later. But understand, right, just like it was told unto our forefather, uh, the prophet Ezra, understand 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 who you're dealing with so again when Yahweh Shai our king of kings our lord of lords and the captain of our salvation says come out of her come out of mystery Babylon the great the whore that sits on many waters come out of their doctrines and their philosophies their principles their values their morals come out of their political structures, come out of their vanities, come out of the belief that they can save you, for they cannot. But they have the power to kill, and they exercise that. The book of Sirach, chapter 9, verse 13. Sirach is also called Ecclesiasticus and can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the King James 1611 Bible. Keep thee far from the man that hath power to kill. So they've been given the power to kill. All right. It was a blessing from our forefather Isaac unto our brother Esau. This is his blessing. He has the power to kill. And he exercises it every day. Come out of her, my people. Keep thee far from the man that hath power to kill. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. Well, who is death? Death is Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mousier. Death is the devil, which means deceivers. And if thou come unto him, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. So again, if you're out there doing wickedly, you're going to run into the police. You're going to run into one of those three-letter agencies. And they can do with you as they will. If you want to try and rise up against this last wicked kingdom uh, with arms and f fight against it, you're going to run into death. And whatever they choose to do with you, they're going to do it with you. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. This place is filled with snares and traps. So we must walk the path that the Father has set out for us. And so the, the brothers, the modern-day prophets, the brothers who are out on the street at camp, the brothers who are giving classes, and the brothers who are online 
speaking this word in truth and in sincerity, speaking, thus saith the Most High, as it is written, are showing you the path. The Father said, don't do that, don't do that. Stay on the path. You come off the path, you're in the, you're in the territory of death, and they will do with you as they please. And it is just that simple. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares, traps, and that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. Where we are is a battleground. Many forget that. Not only are we on the battlements, uh, upon the battlements of the city, we're strangers, we're pilgrims. We're on foreign soil. Wherever we are, we're on foreign soil. We're on foreign soil in foreign lands. And that is just the truth. Keep thee far from the man that hath power to kill. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. And if thou come unto him, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares, and that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. The dragon. Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mousia. They have the blessing of the sword. They have the power to kill. And they are doing just that. And those in mystery, Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America, they are now realizing that their time is coming to an end. And that they have been lied to as well. And also that Amalek, uh, the head family of Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mausier, the ones who say they are the Jews and are not, they are actually running things. They are actually running everything. And they are now letting you know that they run everything. And that they have a firm grip upon the sword given unto Esau that Esau was blessed with that in the last of this last wicked kingdom they are going to let that blood thirst out um, and as I said before the Turkish army is the most powerful land army in NATO more powerful than our own uh, and it's very well equipped, and that would be a game changer for the entire region. And what would the United States do if its NATO ally, anchor of the southern flank of NATO, however, lately it's become questionable about his NATO affiliation, <laughs> attack Israel? Um, I don't think Israel could survive that. The book of the prophet Joel, chapter 3, verse 9. Now, if you'll remember in uh, book 2, chapter 11, the spirit brought out uh, the Turkish president speaking against uh, Israel and their uh, actions against Gaza and the Palestinians. You'll remember in book 2, chapter 11, there's a video of the president of Turkey speaking against the Israelis, speaking against what's being done in the land of Israel against the Palestinians. Verse 9, Pro Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Make up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Verse 10, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. So the father said, in the book of Obadiah, an, amb an ambassador is sent. Right, an ambassador is sent. All these nations are tired. They are tired. They are tired of the dragon. They are tired of the beast system of governance. They are tired. Verse 11, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Verse 12, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of decisions. They're all making decisions. 
The incursion into Gaza was a decision. Killing civilians to flush out Hamas is a decision. Crippling hospitals and health care in Gaza is a decision. Murdering children is a decision. Murdering women is a decision. It's a decision. It's a decision. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Verse 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is near in the valley of decision. Our Father comes in the name of the Son. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is near in the valley of of decision. This is where the Father will plead with all who have come against the nation of Israel, against his son Yahweh Shai, and against himself. And they are being brought there by their own decisions. Remember, they're going to cut their own throats. They're going to cut their own throats. It, it, the, the potential is there. I'm not trying to say that it's going to happen. I'm just saying the potential is there, which is why we need to do more than we're doing to rein in Netanyahu and to get this situation under, under some kind of decent control. Who's running the show, Larry? The natural Israeli rule, if you will, of turning everything over to the generals when they go to war and the civilians just sit back and watch. With Netanyahu, I doubt very seriously if that's the case. And to answer your question directly, ever since Netanyahu, Netanyahu spoke to a joint session of the United States Congress and criticized the sitting president of the United States while he did it. The book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 37. And Babylon, mystery, Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America, which is spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, which is spiritual Sodom and Egypt, the house of bondage. And Babylon shall become heaps, it shall be destroyed. Look at the economy. Look at the drugs and the drug addiction. Look at the homelessness. Look at the failed businesses. Look at the bankruptcies. Look at the suicides. Look at the violence. And Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for dragons. Those dragons are the head family of Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mount Seir. They rule. They are of Esau, but they rule. And they shall become their dwelling place. They run this place. Remember, this uh, beast it was different from all the others because it is being run from America, run from this soil, run from the soil of America. But it doesn't mean those here run it. And astonishment and, and hissing without an inhabitant. You have no say here. You have no right here. You may proudly call yourself an American slash Babylonian, but you have no say here. You have no power here. And just as it happened unto the nation of Israel, the Father in our curses said we would be an astonishment and, and hissing. People are like, oh my God, these Americans. Oh man, look at them. Psh, look at these Babylonians. Psh, wow. Because as it happened unto us, the nation of Israel, in our land, it's happening in mystery, Babylon the Great. The book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 11, And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. Well, don't the dragons, those who claim they are the Jews, don't they live in the land today? Don't they call it theirs? Isn't it their uh, habitation today, their dwelling place? what they call home. 
and I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate. We had no power, we had no authority, we had no say. None. Without an inhabitant, we didn't exist there. We weren't in control. We didn't have power. We didn't have dominion. So as it happened unto us, it is now happening unto mystery Babylon the Great. And here is a crucial point, a crucial point. Please do not overlook this. Currently, power, real power, is in the hands of one man, Benjamin Bibi Netanyahu. Real power is in the hand of one man today. This shows the power, the sheer power of our Father. Because many in mystery Babylon the Great, the so called United States of America, they believe that that third war, world war is never going to happen because they believe that the Congress of Mystery Babylon the Great and that the Senate of Mystery Babylon the Great would never agree and give permission to allow that to happen. Well, our father has shown that he can short circuit that system, that he can bypass that system that he can put the power to kill in the hand of one person. Oh, fear the one true living most high power, Yahweh. Fear him. He is flexing through Yahweh Shai. Real power today. Judgments are amping up upon this earth. And what you're witnessing is a father can short circuit the whole safeguard system and go straight to one person and put it in one person's heart to hit that button and take everyone with them because they have been given the power to kill by our father. Now, another thing to look for is that this all may be a setup for Trump. If Trump can come in and make this whole situation calm down, he then will become a very powerful person upon this earth. A very, very, very powerful person upon this earth. But nonetheless, a powerful person with the power to kill. Who's been running this show? BB. And BB is running it now. And Joe can protest. President Biden can protest all he wants to. And he can make remarks in the dark, as it were, that are strong and forceful. BB's running the show. If they take all the weapons, all the support, all the help to the Israelis out of that region, what would happen to the Bibi Netanyahu administration? If we cut our support completely, which I think now, after 50 years of experience in the U.S. government, is a total impossibility. But if we cut it completely, he'd have to stop. He wouldn't have to stop right away, but he'd have to stop pretty quickly. They are capable of going on, I would say, probably for 30 to 45 days with this kind of bloodshed and so forth. But pretty soon they'd run out of all the things that we give them almost gratuitously. Um, things like the bombs that come off the pylons of the F-16s and such. Um, we're, as Gideon Levy has said before, we're as guilty as the Israelis every time one of those bombs kills a Palestinian child in the street, which is quite a lot of times. We're as guilty. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. This 
was a curse spoken unto the nation of Israel by our father through our forefather the prophet Moses who was a dark skinned man by the way clearly this curse is transferring over to the other nations because hell rises for them if we took all that away if we talk stopped all of our support, plus pulled the carriers out of the Eastern Med and essentially said, we're breaking off contact with Israel. This is too much of a bloodbath. We're not going to tolerate it. They won't listen to us. It'd be over for Israel. Now, when you're attacking civilians, you are yep. playing in the hand of Hamas, not playing against Hamas. I don't think Israel will continue to be a state as it's presently constituted within the next 20 years. I, I'd say within the next decade now. I say that for a number of reasons. First of all, they are a strategic liability, not a strategic asset for the United States. We've always dealt with them during the Cold War. That's what we dealt with them. Taiwan, same thing. You know, an island at the eastern end of the Mediterranean, friendly to us that we could land on if we had to fight the Soviets. Same thing with Taiwan. Then they were a strategic asset. In that very geostrategic sense, they were an asset. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So mystery, Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America, has military bases all over the world. This is what it means by the whore that sitteth upon many waters. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have become made drunk with the wine of her fornication, with her doctrines, her philosophies, her values, her morals. They are now a total liability to the United States, to our reputation, to our power, to our strategic focus. We should be focused on China. China is the real threat to the United States. I'm not saying there's going to be a war there, but there might be if we keep getting weaker and weaker and weaker and China feels like it could steal the march on. So that focus, that strategic focus is terrible. And this latest development, this development in Gaza that the Israelis should have seen coming like a steamroller down the, down the road. I mean, how many intifadas do we have to have? How many times do we have to go through this iteration where people who are fundamentally slaves subhuman, kept that way by another state's military and police forces, suddenly reacts to that. And I, I don't care whether it's Hamas or the Palestinian Authority or some outside power that does it for them, like Saudi Arabia or, or Egypt. It's just going to happen. Now, this cycle can only repeat itself so many times, I think. This might be the last cycle. What is Israel after this cycle ends? Is it what Netanyahu wants, which is a greater, the Zionist dream, a greater Israel? So for those of you who have not heard, this is the Greater Israel Project. This is the idea that certain Zionists want to do as far as taking over large portions of the Middle East around Israel. So let's look. There's Israel right there. And look what they want to take. They want to take all this territory in Egypt into the Sinai Desert all the way up through Lebanon, all the way up through most of Syria, right on down the midsection of Iraq and all of Kuwait, and then the entire northern section of Saudi Arabia. The idea being that they want to go from the Euphrates River all the way to the Sinai. It's so big and encompasses all the water, oil, gas, and everything else in that region, and is really giving Jordan and Egypt and Syria a headache every day because they know no one is satisfied with that kind of movement and gain of territory until they've got more and more and more. The book of the prophet Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 5. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they have not stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Verse 6, how are the things of Esau searched out? How, how are his hidden things sought up? Just want to steal and steal and steal. They went in there in 1948. They said, ah, we're going to take over this little piece right here. This little piece right here. And now they want all these other countries. Now you can see what happened in uh, Lebanon and uh, what's been going on in Syria and all these places. It's just theft. It's just theft. 
all things shall be uncovered. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. All things shall be seen. All things shall be brought to the light. They want everything. So that's what the region would be looking at. They would then figure out a way to terminate Israel as an existent state. That's what they're headed for. And yet you've got this, you've got everything from the U.S. side where John Hagee thinks this is terrific, Christians United for Israel, because it's going to bring about Armageddon. And that's what he's looking for. To the side that says, okay, the only way to protect Israel is to eliminate its enemies. We're starting with the Palestinians. And we'll negotiate with people like the Qataris and the Emirates and Saudi Arabia and so forth. And we'll put cash in front of them, which always gets those Arabs. And when we're ready to smack them, we'll smack them too. But right now, we're just going to keep them close to us. I see that as a, what do you, what would you call that? The strategy of a greater Israel, the strategy of the Zionists from the original original conception. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 7. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. The wicked could care less about the poor and the oppressed, the tortured, the underprivileged. And definitely the righteous, they could care less. They don't even want to know. They don't even want to know. These people literally are, are less than ants to them. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare. So this is what scornful men do. They bring places in, right? Like it's not just, see, you have to understand it. It's never just about them. Right. So in Mystery Babylon of the Great, uh, an Edomite, uh, so-called white person, uh, they lose their job, they lose their fortune, whatever. So instead of just killing themselves, no, they got to kill their whole family and then take themselves out. They got to go to the job and take everybody out at the job, then take themselves out. They bring with them because they are death. They are death. Scornful men bring a city, they bring the whole city with them into damnation scornful men bring a city into a snare into a trap but wise men turn away wrath verse 9 if a wise man contendeth with a foolish man whether he rage or laugh there is no rest do not engage with these people do not engage with them there will be no rest for you no matter how it works out because they have the power to kill They have the power to kill. Now, let's look at this word scornful for a minute. Here is the word for scornful. Scorning. Bragging. Right? They're bragging about it. Yeah, we're just destroying these people. We're killing these people. They're all part of Hamas. They're all terrorists. Every single one of them. Men, women, and children. They're all terrorists. Yeah, we're killing them all. Yeah, so what? Uh, derision. Scornful. Mocking. Frivolous contempt of what is good and upright. Frivolous contempt of what is good and upright. It's not upright to kill children. It's not upright to kill women and children. It's not upright. There's nothing upright about killing women and children and, and innocent people. There's nothing upright about that whatsoever. Mocking, frivolous contempt of what is good and upright. Returning to the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, now verse 10. The blood thirsty hate the upright. Stay far from the man that hath power to kill. They've been tasting of blood for centuries. The blood thirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. 
Verse 11, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. So here they're letting you know, yeah, we want a greater uh, Israel. Thus pissing off everyone around, everyone around them, everyone around them. Really? You want to come in and just steal my land? Just steal my land because you have some sort of vision. You just want to steal it. Oh, by the way, and the most high power, the, the one true uh, living most high power, the father of the nation of Israel, he's not even with you? Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Verse 12, if a ruler hearken to lies, these people are not the chosen. Because if they were chosen, if they were the chosen sons and daughters of the one true living most high power, they would know that they can't do it. That they have no power in their hands. And that they have to wait for the return of Yahweh Shai and the heavenly host. They would know that. They would know that. Not only would they know that, they would submit and wait. So this is clearly not them. This is clearly not them. Verse 12, if a, if a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked because they're servicing a lie and they're servicing deceit. And who is the devil? The deceivers. The deceivers. The deceivers. In October, uh, about a week after uh, Hamas's t atrocities and terrorist attacks, he said this. It is an entire nation out there that is responsible. It is not true, this rhetoric about civilians being aware, not involved. It's absolutely not true. They could have risen up. They could have fought against the evil regime which took over Gaza in a coup d'etat. So what he's arguing there is, oh, there's no such thing as Palestinian civilians. They didn't oust Hamas. And so the idea that they're non-combatants is ridiculous. Yeah. That's, that's what he's arguing there. Congratulations, uh, uh, Isaac Herzog, you uh, now agree with Hamas. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. That is the exact logic that Hamas uses. They say, well, Israel, Israeli citizens voted for Netanyahu and voted for these right-wing governments that occupy us and kill us and imprison us unfairly. They have all these hostages that they take all the time, and women and children. Uh, so we had to kill the Israeli civilians, and that's what we condemn. And we all condemn it together. Say that's you should not, uh, it, you know, kill civilians because of how they voted. Now the president of Israel says, yes, you should. Yes, you should. Not only voting because he knows now that the great majority of Palestinians in Gaza weren't even alive when that vote happened decades ago, right? So now he says they had an active responsibility as civilians to rise up against armed Hamas militants and somehow defeat them with their bare hands. And if they didn't, they deserve to be murdered by us. Congratulations, you agree with Hamas 100%. But we don't, we don't agree with the monstrous actions of Hamas or the monstrous actions of the Israeli president. But now on top of that, he's got a new standard, American civilians. Mm -hmm. American protesters are now, he said it, you heard it on the tape, accomplices to Hamas. So are you gonna murder us too? Because you say, you, we just quoted you, you think it's okay to murder civilians because we didn't actively fight back against uh, your perceived enemies. So are we, first of all, the American protesters, a lot of them are Jewish by the way. But you're gonna, you think it's their accomplices to Hamas and that according to your standards that presumably you can kill them. Mm -hmm. And we didn't rise up against those protesters, so can you kill us too? Who and but most importantly, guys, Israel's not gonna bomb us, obviously, right? The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 16. Now, you're confident that Israel won't nuke you, but because of the actions that you back, because of the actions that you back, which may potentially be the Israelis. Led by those that are leading today, may just send a nuke into Iran. They may just. They may just. But they said, okay, you know, Israel's not going to bomb uh, Mystery Babylon the Great. 
well, you still have uh, nations that are part of the EU and NATO who are not happy and are getting less happy with Mystery Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America, every single day. And the Ten Horns, these countries that are part of uh, the EU and, and NATO, and the Ten Horns which thou sawest upon the beast, the beast system of governance, which is Mystery Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America, these shall hate the whore, the whore that sits on many waters, Mystery Babylon the Great, the so-called United, United States of America, run by Amalek and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is where your nukes are coming from. Because of the actions of those that rule today. And when you come down to it, the actions of very few, <laughs> very few, because the Father is showing his power by short-circuiting all the checks and balances that it actually can be done. That three or four people can get together in a room, hit a button, and things change on this earth. So now, again, because of mystery, Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America, because of their permissiveness of what is occurring... through the hands of the Israelis and what could potentially occur these other nations are going to have great displeasure with mystery Babylon the Great the so-called United States of America and they're going to burn her with fire with thermonuclear warheads as it is written thus saith the Most High, verse 17, and the Most High power hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, the beast system of governance, until the words of the Most High power shall be fulfilled. But most importantly, look at this guy, leader of a foreign country, coming here telling us what to do mm -hmm. with our rights and our citizens. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't allow your citizens to be opposed to me and my country. I order your country to cancel anyone and to call them terrorists and I and drive them from the public sphere. Hey brother, you don't live here. You're not our president. You got nothing to do with us. You pretend to be our ally. All you ever do is get us in trouble and now you got us dropping bombs on innocent civilians and now you're bragging about it, driving the whole world to hate us as well as you. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna order us around and call us accomplices? Nah, yeah, take that crap somewhere else. The book of Psalms, chapter nine, verse 16. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. So by being over there and lying and saying that you are the Israelites, that you are the nation of Israel. Remember, we as the Israelites are a people and wherever we go as a people, we are the nation of Israel. By being over there and lying, and stealing the land which the Father gave unto us. So you didn't steal our land. You stole our Father's land, which he had chosen. The, the king in heaven, you stole his land. He hasn't forgotten that. He has seen all wickedness. By you doing that, and by your vanity of thinking that you can expand and steal other lands, you have set your own trap. You have cut your own throat. The book of St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 35, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. That trap, that snare, people are going to fall into it Immediate, just suddenly. People are going to fall into it suddenly, literally. Things are going to be going along just fine, as in the days of Noah. Things are going to be going along just fine. And then all of a sudden, 
your your uh, national alarm systems are going to go off. There are going to be special broadcasts on TV. All programming is going to be interrupted, and you're going to hear the thing you don't want to hear. The thing you thought could never, ever, ever happen. Now remember, all prophecy must be fulfilled. But if you can see, you can see it, right? The Father's showing you that the power is there for it to happen at any moment. So for those on the fence, wake up. And for the brothers and sisters who are firmly in this faith, rejoice. Rejoice. The book of Psalms, chapter 11, verse 6, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, traps, and that rain are thermal nuclear warheads. Thermal nuclear warheads. Fire and brimstone. Volcanic eruptions. Hot spewing lava. And horrible tempests. This is the uh, wind from that thermal nuclear fallout. Those explosions. This shall be the portion of their cup. As it is written, thus saith the Most High. As it is written, thus saith the Most High. The book of Psalms, chapter 141, verse 9. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me, and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Keep me, Father, from all these traps that they have set for uh, the souls of the righteous, first and foremost, uh, the souls of the Israelites, your true sons and daughters. But also the, the snares set for the, for the poor, those who aren't part of the elites, those who aren't part of uh, this last wicked kingdom and who they serve. Verse 10, let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst that I withal escape. Let them all fall into their nets, Father. Let them all fall into the nets that they have created. And so this is what America is being shown today. This is what... Uh, mystery Babylon the Great is being shown today that as they have set snares and traps for the so-called Negroes the so-called Latins Hispanics and the so-called Native Americans for centuries as they have set traps traps to us that we weren't aware of traps behind our backs devious devious traps traps have been set for mystery Babylon the Great and you are falling into them now. You are falling into them now. You are falling into them now. This is this is the thing that really gets to me. The the arrogance, the underlying arrogance in the messaging there, which essentially tells the American people who are nickel and dime by our own government when it comes to our needs. But when it comes to the needs of the Israeli government, and when it comes to what what weaponry they need to carry out their atrocities against the Palestinian people, Americans just need to, Jenk, we should just shut up, give them the aid that they demand, and just take it. We're not allowed to exercise our freedom of expression within the borders of our own country, according to Isaac Herzog. And if we do, then that means that we are accomplices to Hamas. We've been very clear in how we feel about what Hamas did. We did not at all even pause when it came to condemning the atrocities committed by Hamas. But the notion that American citizens Okay, who have been shelling out tax dollars in the form of military aid for Israel need to sit down and shut up and just provide that aid and never criticize what the Israeli government is carrying out against Palestinian civilians in Gaza is ridiculous and we don't comply. We don't comply. So the power to kill and blood thirsty. and in death and so hungry for power that to kill isn't enough for the rulers of this last wicked kingdom, for the devil, which means deceivers who are the rulers of this last wicked kingdom, for death. those that sit upon this pale horse, 
which is the Esau, Edom, Idumia, or Mount Seir, in his old age, this kingdom in its old age, in its final uh, stages of life. So even the power to kill isn't enough for them. You must know who you're dealing with. I want to tell you something that might shock the audience, which is that Israel not only imprisons Palestinians who are alive, they are also imprisoning dead people, martyrs. 398 Palestinians who have already died in Israeli jails or uh, in, in, uh, uh, because they were shot by Israeli army are kept in jail. Those who die in Israeli prisons because of a sickness or because of torture have to stay in prison uh, in refrigerators to complete their sentence. Yeah. Which How could does be Israel justify years. that, Boudour? Boudour? How does Israel justify keeping the bodies of, of Palestinian prisoners or people who've died under, under their watch? No justification. 142 of the Palestinians who were killed recently, and mostly young people, a lot of them are children, are kept in refrigerators, refusing to release them as a form of psychological torture against their families, but as a form of collective punishment against their families. Right. And the 256 are kept in what they call uh, numbered cemeteries where uh, there is a number for each one, and they are just there. Some of them have been there for more than 40 years. Right. So it's an awful kind of practice that, uh, of course, none of that would happen to an Israeli Jewish person. A shocking practice that you described there. Now remember, our father is a righteous judge. He is a righteous judge. So, all the father is going to do unto all of the wicked. The wicked, uh, first and foremost, Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mount Seir, the so-called white nation. But the wicked of all the other nations and families upon the earth and the wicked of the two-thirds of the nation of Israel, all the Father is going to do is rightfully judge you for the words of your mouth in the actions of your hands and your feet. But woe unto the dragons. Woe unto the devil and woe unto death. The book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 15. Woe means destruction. Woe means destruction. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel. So as Esau, Edom, Idumi, and Mount Seir rejoiced at not only taking the sons and daughters, the gold, the men, the silver, the women, the treasures of the one true living most high power, the inheritance of the one true living most high power. Uh, not only uh, did they rejoice in taking us into slavery, but also taking the land that the Father put us in, the house of Israel, which is theft of property from the one true living most high power. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. And so that has begun on mystery Babylon the Great, the so-called United States of America. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir. Right? So there's no confusion. Esau, Edom, Idumia, Mount Seir. So there's no confusion, right? So the so-called white nation. And the rulers today, the rulers are Amalek, those who say they are Jews, but are not. So there's just no confusion about who is who, who are the dragons, who, who are uh, the deceivers, who are the devil, and who, who is death, who are death. Right? Just no confusion. O Mount Seir and all Idumia, even all of it, and they shall know that I am Yahweh. 
because of what they have said and what they have done with their hands and with their feet because they have taken the power to kill and just abused it just abused it the last scripture we're going to in this chapter is The book of the prophet Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 15. For the day of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Our Father, through the Son, is going to remind everyone upon this earth who has the ultimate power to kill. Make no mistake about it, World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord, to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world. Remember who you are and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.